You're listening to Witch Wednesdays, your weekly podcast source for all things witchcraft in the modern world. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I am Steph and you are in for a very interesting episode today. So I have a guest here with me and I am going to uh, turn it over to them to introduce themselves and let you know where you can find them online. Hello everybody, my name is Olga and uh, I am the Olga behind Olga's Wellness, uh, aptly name, and you can find me on Instagram uh, where I primarily hang out. Um, and I'm also on Facebook at uh, Olga's Wellness Food Freedom Community. So what I do is I am a binge eating coach and I help primarily women uh, overcome uh, binge eating, emotional eating, overeating, food addiction, yo-yo dieting, and all these not so fun issues with food, which are very, very common um, in, in, in the female population. And to be, to be honest with you, uh, in the world at large. Which is all wrapped up in this idea of holistic living. Um, and I'm excited to talk to you today because I don't know how many of my podcast listeners know this, but I think my Patreon listeners do, um, is that binge eating is something that I struggled with for a long time. And I am actually down almost a hundred pounds <laughs> um, as of today. I think probably by the time this episode goes live, I actually will be down a hundred pounds. And I had to completely change my way of eating because diets never worked. Um, but I think my Patreons know this because first of all, they've seen me on videos and they see me, um, losing weight since I, you know, changed my mindset and, you know, witchcraft and, and spell work and, you know, living holistically had a lot to do with that. So I am very excited to talk to you today because I think this is something that more people struggle with than they would like to admit, because it's such like a, um, hidden topic. There's some shame around it. Um, and there should not be. So I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent. I'm going to let you, uh, <laughs> Jump in there. <laughs> this is your specialty. <laughs> um, oh, Steph, Steph, you know, firstly, absolutely massive kudos to you for, you know, taking the bull by the horns and, you know, realizing that diets are, are not the way to go as, you know, I have struggled as well. You know, this is really, you know, how um, Olga's wellness came to be. It was my nightmare for well over a decade. So, you know, the, 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 the fact that you were able to, to recognize it, that it is mindset, it is this holistic part to it it is the spirituality it's the emotions that's honest, honestly amazing and 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 the, the, this is really you know what, what i try to do both, both on social media and also we, with my clients you know helping them realize that you know what we see on the surface as the issues with food the issues with weight are only the very very tiny tip of the iceberg and what is beneath the surface is the pandora's box of all the other imbalances in our life and really the disconnection in the life that uh, needs to be addressed first before before we even start looking into um, the realm of intentional weight loss and this also doesn't have to be the, be the case for uh, everybody who who is suffering suffering with binge eating yeah and i think that's a good you know metaphor for witchcraft in general and shadow work is that like we we see the cute little you know spells and altars on instagram but how much is like deep inner work under the surface like there's so much that goes into that and goes into your practice and every part of our lives is really interconnected it, it absolutely is it absolutely is you know you know what what I, I i find you know both in my personal experience and with my clients is that when we are in this you know binge eating mindset and the mind becomes basically the only part of us that uh, is active and it is the bullying part of us uh, and we have so much disconnect I find, you know, both from the, the other parts of ourselves, as well as, you know, the world at, at large, because what, what, what ten, tends, tends to happen is that, um, to, so I believe, you know, there are four main elements of self. So there is the physical body, there is the mind, there is our emotions, and there is our spirit. So in, in the uh, situation where a person is struggling with food, um, basically what happens is there is only the very bullying 
mind which is quite overactive but the person doesn't realize or do doesn't um, hear the signals that the bodies are constantly sending them like I'm hungry I'm full I have enough I'm too tired I'm too sleepy all of this um, is squished by the overactive mind same thing with emotions they they often often get get dismissed and when it comes to the intuition the deeper connection with uh, with the source with deeper connection with other people the deeper connection with nature that generally uh, tends to get dismissed as well because the overactive mindset tends to reason it out and i find that the that what helps clients a lot is to redevelop this connection to all these parts of, of themselves to start seeing the body not as this burden that needs to be shrunk or needs to be changed but as this amazing being that allows us to do so many things that allows us to see the passion feel and that's beautiful the way it is and connecting with our mind but in a kinder way you know being a friend to ourselves ourselves not 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 this inner critic and um, when it comes to emotions it is very much about uh, appreciating them you know as, as, as you as you mentioned um witchcraft is not only about you know cute stuff and uh you know and and smiling with the flowers you know it is also about this other side same the thing with our emotions you know some stuff is, is nice to feel some stuff isn't that nice to feel and we've, we need to get to a place where we are being comfortable with the uncomfortable where we can feel unhappy maybe upset maybe sad without feeling this immediate need that I need to stop feeling this way and then I'm, I'm to turn to food and when it comes to the connection to the spiritual side of things well this is sort of the guiding compass I think that allows you to really get into um, deeper knowing both when it comes to when to eat when not to eat, how to live, how to move. And this is all, really all, all the idea of, of uh, the intuitive eating and intuitive living and intuitive movement. And I, I'm, I've, I've kind of got, gone, gone on, on, on a little bit, bit of a longer, longer rant here, but, but, I, but I, hope, I hope it's kind of making sense. Oh, yes, absolutely. And you, know, you touched on some really great points in there that it's not, I, and this is prob probably where my eating struggles came from, is that you can feel things. We are supposed to feel the negative things too. Like we, it's not all, you know, happiness and good things all the time. And I definitely ate and used other means to not have to feel any sort of negative feelings, but they're a good thing. They're alerting you to something that's, that's wrong in your life, something that you want to fix. And you know, if you're just sad, sometimes it's okay to be sad. We have lots of things to be sad about in this world. We all do. We all have different struggles. Um, so learning how to deal with those emotions in a healthy way has definitely been a huge part of my own personal journey. And it sounds like it was for you as well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you know, you know, you know I think, I think lo looking back, it's, it's easy to see patterns which you couldn't see when you were in the in the midst of things. So oh, now, yeah. when I'm when, I, when I'm looking back, you know, at my at my childhood, at my um, teenage teenage years and uni university years, I can really clearly see that I would, I never really learned emotional tools to deal with the emotions and. Um, you know you know that 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 part is really such a there's so much so many things to cover there because part of it is the emotion themselves the way you you experience them and and then what tends to tends to come at sort of several places so one is to stop feeling the way you are currently feeling so that that is this numbing thing but there is also a part of, of feeling guilty for feeling whatever you're feeling at the moment. So for me, uh, I, I had this idea in my mind that I shouldn't be angry, that it's unfeminine to, to be angry and to be a good little girl, I shouldn't have this emotion at all. So when something 
upsetting was was happening or you know something frustrating was happening I'd immediately feel this natural anger which is as every emotion it's completely normal to feel angry about something and then immediately in would come the guilt oh god you shouldn't feel this way you're not a good person if you're feeling this way where you won't be a good enough oh, well, yeah. stu student if if you continue there so th so this is not allowed so food again became you know a way to fill this in and kind of stop this feeling down it's like oh you don't <laughs> well not, now you won't be able to get out from this mountain of chocolate i just put on you so <laughs> um, so there we go anger sorted and then i think a third element is also the way we respond to emotions because i I, I am. I, I'd imagine you, you, you are, you are as well a highly sensitive person. So I used to think for the longest time that I'm just crazy. That <laughs> why is it that you know if I if I see an upsetting movie it really affects me for hours later. Why is it that you know no if I am in a room full of bright lights or noisy music that I feel like exhausted and I really need to quite literally sit in a dark room and close my eyes and just not not be stimulated and it was only years later when i realized some people are just wired to be a little bit more sensitive than other people and what would probably have been labeled well 30 years ago when back when i was at school as you know being the cry baby and <laughs> all, all all the all the sort of the, the sort of negative uh, adjectives was simply the way my body was responding to certain things. So I think you know that that, that is that is really a lot to to unpack under the the emotional side of things. Oh, absolutely, and I think I get that comment a lot from other you know witches and pagans who are on the spiritual journey. Is that we are just a group of very emotional people. Like we really you know tap into the emotional energy of others. It's, you know, it's not even just ourselves. It's just being in the same room as somebody who is feeling sad or angry or something we all of a sudden like pick up on that just I think we're very in tune with our you know surroundings and with other people in our lives and that I think people don't realize how much that influences the other aspects of your life because you start feeling like that and you're like oh, okay well I'm gonna go home and you know light a candle or craft a spell jar for happiness but you're not getting to the root of the problem not that picking up other people's emotions is a problem, but you need to recognize that it's, it's happening and definitely not turn to food for it, which is definitely what I did. Yeah, and, and, and that, and that, that's, that, that, that's a hundred percent what, what I, I did, did, did too. You know, you, you know, it's the, I, th I think, I think, you know, part, partly when it, when it comes to all of the, the, the emotional issues, it's also, the expectation of the environment of how you meant to respond to to a, to a certain emotion. So, I, f I find you know because because now I I can work from home and if I do feel overwhelmed I can just go to a different room in the house and it's not an issue. But I found me when I was still working in the corporate saying, hey guys, I just need to meditate for fifteen minutes because I feel a little bit overwhelmed when by the past board meeting. What does not be really the most appropriate. Um, response and, and it would not really be met with much understanding unfortunately however if i were to say hey guys i'm i'm going to grab something from the vending machine i'm going to go for a smoking break nobody would bat an eyelid so there is a lot i think also in the environment you know especially in the nine to five corporate environment which makes it much harder for sensitive people um and more spiritually mind minded people to find, you know, healthy ways of coping with it. Oh, yeah, I can recognize that. Absolutely. Because I used to uh, work in downtown Chicago in a high rise, like it's just constant noise and people, I mean, hundreds of people in that building and just noise from sirens and on the streets and you know, thousands of, of tourists in the streets. And it's just, it's so much, it's so overwhelming, but for, you know, eight hours while you're there, you're just supposed to power through and work the entire time with no breaks. It's just, that's how society is. I think pandemic hit and we've moved a little bit away from that, which I appreciate, but there are absolutely still some professions where that is the norm and the mental toll that that takes on people is not recognized. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yes. It, 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 it was a, it was a, a silver lining, I think, in the in the pandemic that it made people intentionally stop. As you know, in, in this day and age, there's, there's so much focus on doing, you know, the, there is the next task, there's another deadline, there's another thing to do. And healing doesn't come from necessarily doing more, it generally comes from stopping and from letting go. There is, of course, an element of, do, of doing something else, but um, I think, you know, in, in, in to, to today's, today's society, there is definitely, you know, too, too, much, too, too much focus on doing. So when, when the, the pandemic hit, I think it really hit home quite literally with, with quite a, a lot of people that it's probably not that sustainable to be constantly running all the time because what, what we really are doing at the core is running away from ourselves. You know, we were putting so many tasks on the plate, which is exactly what I do because I'm a perfectionist. Um, and to live, live my life on this constant uh, hamster wheel, really, of uh, things to do without stopping and thinking, does it get me anywhere closer? to my purpose? Does it get me anywhere closer to myself? Is it really something that I want to do as a person? Or is it something that I'm doing because it's expected of me? And it was only really when, um, as, as you can probably see on video, when I started losing my hair, that um, it made me stop and think, think, think for a bit. But, you know, when, when you mentioned, you know, that, that, that sky, skyscraper in, in Chicago and all of the noise, I, I can absolutely relate to it because when I first noticed it falling was when I was working on an audit in a, in a big city called Leicester in the UK, a very middle of uh, that town. Again, loads of noise, loads of deadlines, lots of fluorescent lighting. Mm -hmm. um, no break rooms really because who needs break rooms um and yeah just being better for 10 hours a day and then surprise surprise my my hair said um you should really do something about this life because <laughs> what you're doing is completely unsustainable oh yeah and and it is i think um i mean i'm glad that people are taking mental health more seriously it's unfortunate that it had to take a pandemic for you know, higher ups to realize the toll it was taking on their employees. But it, yeah, like you said, at least that was like a little bit of a silver lining there. Um, hard to say that there was anything good that came out of it, but at least um, we are adapting to a little bit of a slower pace and really prioritizing because I did not lose any weight until the pandemic because I did not have to go to work and because, well, in an office setting and commute time and I did, I could cook. <laughs> it was really what it is. I did not order you know, pizza every single night anymore, um, because finally I was a priority. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so I'm, cu I'm curious, you know, what, uh, what, what might, what might you uh, click that, uh, that, 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 there's more to it, you know, than, than, than just the food, that, that there's sort of time to prioritize yourself, as you said. Yeah, it was definitely, you know, I had, I had the time um, now, but then I also realized part of it was happiness pounds, which is, you know, some, something that happens when people get into relationships or they get a new job and they're just happy. Happiness pounds are a real thing. And I really, I didn't really pay attention to my food at all or what I was doing. I did not connect that to emotions. I did not connect that to what was going on in my life. It was just, I order food, I eat it, the end. Uh, which obviously was not working. That's not, not what was actually happening. So when I had time to sit down and make it, I realized that me at five, six was eating the same amount and type of food as my husband, who is six, four and 250 pounds of muscle. <laughs> so why on earth? And he works out like crazy. He's a very physical job and, you know, lifts weights and runs on the treadmill. And I do none of those things. Why, why would I be eating exactly what he's eating in the same portions? And I just had to to take a step back and look at what the heck I was doing because it really made no sense when I had the time to finally sit down and think about it mm -hmm. yeah yeah yes yes yeah and you know you know I, I, I can I can quite 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 relate to the this uh, experience you know when, when you look back at what what you have have been eating in a day or a week and you think like how 
on earth that I can get through, through all of this? And, and it can be, you know, very, very both, I think, distressing and just perplexing because there, there's a part of you that, that, that just doesn't really understand how it all happened you know I've, I've, I've had circumstances when I have sort of planned my 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 meals um or plan, planned my lunches and they just happened to be a lunch for one day um and the whole week just disappeared within me within just a couple of hours um and and I, and I do 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 find that you know when and people, people will come to me, you know, whether it's, it's on Instagram or elsewhere, and they, you know, ask for like one, one little piece of advice that it's, it's really, it's really, really a, the first stage is, is really this, this stopping and having awareness, you know, taking inventory of where you are at the, at the moment. As it's just so, um, it's so easy to not notice uh, and it's very then hard to fix to, to well it, it's then very hard to fix what you are unaware of so I, I do do find that you know it, the, the very first stage really of um, of of that healing journey is being able to look at where you are at, at the moment in all these various uh, areas of your life so it's, it's not just food but it's also you know asking yourself you know where I, am I at emotionally you know um, do I even know what I'm feeling as very often people say I have absolutely no idea there's something that comes up and then I eat and then I feel really bad so getting in touch, in touch with this the, this side of us and and also noticing the mental chatter is how so often it happens happens automatically and then we take it as as a fact especially with this you know the, the critical part, part part of you uh saying all these nasty nasty things that we so often say to ourselves and we would never ever say them to anybody else just just noticing them and being aware of it and and i and i, and I do do find that it's it's also noticing the kind of deeper connections within yourself you know do you feel connected to you or do you feel like, like you're, you're just inhabiting a body and going through the motions yeah and I actually think as, as far as recognizing you know what was happening and making changes and getting in touch with that I, I think that it started maybe a little bit, at least with witchcraft and with a spell, because I wanted to do a spell to lose weight because like, why, why would I not? I do, you know, spells and everything else. But the important thing in like setting your intention when you are doing that kind of work is to get really detailed and put it in the present tense. So I couldn't do a spell that says, I want to lose weight. It needs to be, I eat healthy. I find it easy to drink enough water in a day. And when I really sat down and made all of those intentions and pres in present tense, I really started to get to the root of the issue. I was like, okay, well, I can clearly now see where a lot of my um, problems are coming from and just how disconnected I was to, you know, my own body. We just really like, you know, I do grounding and, you know, ground with the earth, but it just was not that part of it would seem so separate from what I was eating. And I was like, no, all of these things really go together. Um, and I need to figure out all of the roots of my problem. So, I mean, witchcraft did help with that, but then, and I did, I went ahead and did the, you know, weight loss spell and, you know, set intentions with water, but they were intentions like I enjoy fruits and vegetables, which <laughs> I don't know that that's actually true, but you know, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm working on it, but those are the intentions that I had to set. And it really made it clear. Like, okay, I do not eat fruits, fruits and vegetables. I drink like three glasses of water a day and consist on coffee. Like th those are not, you know, healthy things. And yes, those definitely affect, um, my weight. I, I had to, um, realize the effect that sugar had on me because big food corporations make everything sugary and fatty to get us addicted. It's not our fault. <laughs> it's really not. Um, they have perfected it over the years to be addicting foods, but you have to notice that you have to realize those patterns. So I do think that witchcraft and spirituality can help at least get you on the right path to figuring out what some of those issues are. Is that something that where do you start when somebody comes to you and asks for help? <laughs> do you start with the mindset? Do you start with, you know, I don't think you would start with cut out all of these foods because that's just leads to binging, of course. 
yeah 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 yes yeah, sure and and and, and it's, a, it's a it's a good 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 question because I, I i do find that you know when, when it comes to things holistic and spiritual when you realize the connection it's like oh shoot everything is connected like everything is so connected <laughs> So like, well, what, what is the first step? So I, I kind of liken it a little bit to building a house. So I'm, I, ca I can't say that I'm a construction worker, but I think everybody would start with laying the foundations. So I feel strongly that, that the foundation in this sense is the relationship you have with yourself. And it is relationship with these four elements of self that I briefly that touched upon at the very start. And the reason they are so important that if we start messing with, uh, you know, the way you see food or with the diet or whatever other factor, if deep down you are disconnected from your body, you really dislike yourself. You're criticizing yourself all the time. You have no idea what you're feeling. You have no even a clue about your intuition in the sense of eating it's all going to fall apart. And, and, this, and this is really, you know, heartbreaking when you speak with people who have tried, quote unquote, absolutely everything, and they have tried a lot of various diets. And in this sense, it doesn't really matter, you know, whether you go, you go keto, carnivore, vegan, or whatever. Um, if you don't have this good relationship with yourself, it's not going to last. Because at the, at the first point when there is a difficulty there is some stressful situation the default response of having a, a, an urge to stop this neg negative uh, well quote unquote a negative feeling because there are no, no neg negative feelings really but uh, stopping this uncomfortable feeling with food and then feeling guilty about it and just perpetuating the cycle of I really need to soothe myself this will be a disaster later on so i find that you know when we have this foundation first this this gives you a solid grounding for then taking a look on how you actually see the food because i, I find it's also about relationship with the food itself um so just as we have beliefs about ourselves that let's say you know i need to be weight x in order to be worthy or in order to be pretty or in order to, uh, to be comfortable we all have exact same beliefs about food and often it's, you know, chocolate is, is evil or something is bad or, is, or uh, I, should, I shouldn't eat something or you should finish all the food on your plate because children are starving. This is the one I've, I, I can definitely uh, recall from, uh, my, from the primary school days. Um, so it is making peace with uh, the actual food on, on the plate and also, allowing yourself to have what, what, whatever you need. As I find that, you know, after a lot of, um, after many years of dieting and restricting this, restricting that, and often flip-flopping between the, these food rules, depending on which diet you're currently on, you can end up being very confused about what is healthful and what isn't healthful and it can be a lot of random goals um coming up say you know you shouldn't have more than a handful of nuts or you absolutely must have five pieces of fruit and veg a day whether you like it or not or, or there is a lot of um dogma of what healthy eating should look like in an ideal world so the second stage is really about unpacking it all and um, being able to recognize how your body re, uh, relates to food and also when you do feel an urge in order that you really want whatever whatever it is with a chocolate or crisps or whatever how will you handle it and how will you handle the, the triggering foods because we can't really avoid food for forever it's you know, to, to, to an extent, if you work from home, you sort of can, but the minute you go on holiday and you see a trigger food, it can be the beginning of a very unpleasant cycle. So it is really learning to make peace with food or, and, and it includes all foods, both the processes and the and unprocessed part. And only when we have made peace both with, with ourselves and with the plate, then and it's really about long-term sustainability and that this is sort of the roof upon the house. Um, this is something like that will make it last because, you know, if you build a house, you have the foundations, you have the walls, but you haven't put the roof on that, 
the minute it rains, it's going to rain in your living room. So it, it is also important to have ways of making this last. And it, it is really about the skills of not just coping in the moment of being able to handle trigger in the moment, it is about preventing the benches in the first place. And this is very much about self-care, healthful habits, um, and uh, practices that will help you keep replenishing yourself so that your glass is full and that you are able to pour out of it to, for whatever you need to do. And then the other parts are also your relationship with the um, with the uh, with the outside whether it's outside world or, or other people as um often meal times especially during holiday season I, in the us it will be thanksgiving in the uk it's, it's of course christmas um they can be very stressful there is uh, there can be a lot of expectation um of um what you should eat and how much you, sh you should eat. A lot of aunties saying, oh, go on, I made this pie, especially for you. Once you have the seventh piece today. And the, and and also, you know, snarky comments, like, are you sure you want to eat it? Oh, oh you already had two pieces. Are you sure you want the third? So learning how to handle other, uh, other people as well is, is also a critical part of being able to, to um, prevent it overall. Um, yeah, so so that, that 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 is a little bit of a long answer. <laughs> so um, switching gears, well, not switching gears. So if somebody wanted to, you know, work with you and realize that they cannot do this by themselves, you offer quite a bit. So you offer coaching, you have a newsletter, you have your Instagram, you have shorter, longer classes. Um, I think right when this episode is coming out, you're offering another class. So um, how can somebody work with you? Sure. Yeah. So uh, that 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 a uh, couple, couple of, of main ways. So um, what, what I just described is basically the one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, coaching program that uh, I run with my clients, and uh, it runs for twelve weeks, um, and we work together on one-on-one -on -one basis, uh, ninety minutes a week. So, it, we, so we so we really kind of dig dig into things, and because I work on Zoom, you know, whether you are in the UK, US, I even had inquiries from Australia. That's absolutely fine. We can kind of work out mutually um, convenient time and uh, take it from there. Um, and then I run a group coaching program. So this one is uh, just five weeks and, and it's really good for people who uh, perhaps they don't have the time commitment, uh, perhaps that they're not really sure whether it is for them. And we have gone through this first part, the foundation part, and that's the reason it's called Food Freedom Foundations. Um, because I find, you know, when you have this solid grounding, it's so much easier to then um, either if, if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one, or whether, whether you want to just see how you feel after that. Um, and yeah, yeah, on, on uh, top of that, every now and again, I run free workshops or masterclasses. So uh, just keep your eyes peeled, whether on Instagram or Facebook for, uh, for what, what will be coming next. Great. So one thing that I always like to ask guests is there is no really like typical perfect day but what does a day in your life look like what are some sort of spiritual holistic living elements that you try to get into your every day that you have found really helped you on your journey mm -hmm. uh, I, I, absolutely so I start every day without fail with, with a meditation this was something that has been massively helpful for me, both in my recovery and I'd, I'd say really in, in life overall. So um, I meditate twice a day and I have done for the past over two years. So that, that is definitely there. Um, when I remember to do it, I quite like to pull a tarot card in the morning and see what, what the future holds. And it also is, I think, a very good way of really getting in touch with your intuition. Because, you know, recovery is really about getting to trust yourself as opposed to trusting the scales or, you know, the, the, the diet book or what, whatever else. So, so uh, I, I quite enjoy, enjoy this. And um, on Sundays, I try to do a, a little bit of a longer 
uh, long disk thread and uh, uh, try, trying to interpret this. I still have, have to consult a book, but uh, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> you know. good. <laughs> so yeah, so that 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 uh, that uh, that that's another thing. Um, and then I I say it's the uh, various cleansings that is it's really important for me to protect my energy. So uh, I have this dust again. I put uh, salt bowls. Salt bowls. I, I I put some essential oil, oils in them so that they they kind of amp them up and they they smell really nice. So that's uh, that's that's so that's also good. Um, I really like making various concoctions. Um, <laughs> um, pro the only problem with this is that uh, I, my house is too small to store them all. <laughs> so, so I really have to just um, uh, pace myself in uh, how much how much I'm doing. So um, it, it, it is tempting, though, to try to read all the books and do every single recipe in them. But, uh, you know, the spatial realities, unfortunately, <laughs> um, catch up with us. <laughs> I agree with that. I feel that way too. I'm like, I want to do everything. I want to make everything, but where am I going to put it? Yes, <laughs> exactly. It, 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 it is quite helpful, I find, over the holiday time because you can then make loads of stuff and give it to people as a gift. Um, and then you make it and then you can get rid of it and then make somebody happy all at the same time, which, which is amazing. <laughs> And, you know, I was going to say that earlier and I completely forgot. So I'm glad you brought up tarot, but that is, I, I agree with that. I enjoy tarot and Oracle cards and learning my intuition and, and getting better at that in that way also helped with the food issue and learning to trust actual hunger cues and what I felt like eating, learning to, you know, they call it intuitive eating. Um, but if I don't trust my intuition and I'm not working on that, how am I going to apply that to food as well? So yes, I was going to say tarot and divination in general, just learning to trust myself and my own intuition um, is something that I've, I've improved on over the last two years. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and you know, and I, I love, I love, love that, you know, that that connection that that that, that you are emphasizing because I, I, I do find you know sometimes you know the, the part of tarot divination which has, can be a bit of kind of a separate part, you know, something that we kind of do you know on a side or uh, if, even though you know as, as, as we, we were saying at the start, you know, it's all holistic, right? It, it's all intertwined. So you know, the more you get in touch with your intuition in one area of your life, the more it will bleed into all the other areas. You know, say, same when it comes to things like med meditation or, you know, finding your intention. You know, you can set this intention to, you know, be positive towards yourself, be kind to yourself today or um, when, when, when it comes to um, get, get, getting in touch with the energy, getting in touch with you know how hungry you are, or you know how the food is making you feel. So there, so there is, I think, a lot of parallels, you know, in the spiritual work um, with the way it manifests with our relationship with food. Yeah, it it's connected to the physical. They're not two separate realms, which I have been, you know, guilty myself of of working that way, that tarot is completely separate. It's a spiritual realm and, you know, it's part of my practice. It's, it is in no way related to my physical body, but it, obviously it is. <laughs> and uh, I feel like working on those practices and of course, like you said, meditation, those are all parts of caring for ourselves. And I think a lot of food issues stem from and, and, you know, witchcraft, which is in general, we'd like to care for other people. So we spend a lot of time caring for nature. We care for pets. We care for plants. We care for, you know, other people in our lives. And we do all of these things because um, we're, we, we realize that the world is so interconnected. And we're like, we must take care of nature. We must do these things. You know, it's part of witchcraft and we just don't, you know, draw that parallel to, we got to take care of ourselves too. We are on that list. We are high on that list, top of that list. <laughs> and um, I, I think that, yeah, meditation, all those holistic ideas can help you realize that yes they are connected your physical body is connected to all of the other things that you take care of you've got to take care of that too uh, one one hundred percent yeah yes you know it, 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 as, as you mentioned you know having having too much on your plate in the figurative sense will 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 lead to depletion and you know also the if when we are in this mode of you know just doing 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 all all the all the time 
it can then lead to certain feelings and then, you know, little budding resentment of, you know, I don't have time for myself. You know, I, I, I don't have time for A, B and C. And sometimes, we, you know, we become a bit of a prisoner. You know, the devil card very much comes to mind. You know, when you, you see these two, um, the, the, the man and the woman with the chains around the neck, but the chain is big enough, they, 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 they can take it and pull it off the head if they choose to. And sometimes these chains that, that, that we are wearing on ourselves are of our own making. And it takes time to stop and realize, you know what, I am in control and I can choose differently. As, 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 it, as it is a lot about choice and you know, sometimes also about um, what we believe about, you know, uh, what is kind of required of us, you know, how how much we should be putting out, as opposed to, you know, how how much is my capacity that still leaves me enough room for taking care of myself, because we are also important and we are as connected to the universe as we are as as all the pets and plants and everybody else are that that we take care of. So, if we take care of them to our own. Um, uh, you know, to do our own decrement, that, 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 that doesn't serve. Yeah, absolutely. So before I let you go, <laughs> something else that I like to ask is if you have any one piece of advice for beginners, whether that is beginners to, you know, fueling your body properly, beginners to spirituality, witchcraft, any, any of those things, if you have one piece of advice for a beginner, what would it be? Um, I would say uh, start spending time with yourself and uh, spending time with yourself. I, I don't mean by this, you know, ju just just go to an empty room and start scrolling on your phone for, for 15 minutes, but really get to know who you are and you, you are a mini kind of the, the deeper you. So start observing yourself, you know, how your body responds to things how it feels at the moment, you know, how, what, what your emotions are at the moment, you know, how connected are you, you know, how, how does your body actually feel like if you were, were, were to give yourself a hug. So th th this is really the very beginning uh, stages of raising awareness and connecting with, 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 with your body as this is where, where it all starts, you know, with connection and awareness. That is great beginner, I mean, not even beginner, it's just great advice in general, because some of us really um, struggle with silence, with being alone, with our own thoughts. Um, we don't like it. <laughs> Humans in general, we just, we don't like it. We crave, you know, connection and being with people, but it's just as important to, to recognize yourself and be with yourself and be alone with your thoughts for, you know, at least a little while. I try to do that too every day. <laughs> so good advice. Beautiful. So, Thank you so much for being here. Um, listeners, I will have everything linked over at witchwednesdays.com. So you can find Olga on all of the uh, areas online. If you'd like to check out her Instagram, you have lots of great tips on your Instagram. You are always, you are constantly posting. I, I'm terrible at Instagram. I never like post it, but you always have like great reels and tips and things. So um, I will have everything linked so you can find all of that information easily. And thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And listeners, that is everything that I have for you this week. I will see you next week. Need even more? Subscribe to Patreon and YouTube for exclusive bonus content. Order a themed witchcraft box every month through Witch Wednesdays on Etsy. Be sure to follow on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast. Find all these links and more at witchwednesdays.com.